What's up team, today we're gonna be doing some tests to figure out how to make the foam fountain of science the absolute best. Now I know what you're thinking, Nick, I've already seen this experiment before. That is true, you may have seen this on America's Got Talent, the Today Show, Fox and Friends, but I started doing a Nickipedia live show and I sold out my very first show down at the Frost Science Museum in Miami. So, I really wanted to perfect this, I really wanted to figure out what is the absolute optimal mixture of chemicals to make the perfect foam fountain of science. So today, we're gonna to be making the most perfect foam fountain of science ever. Here's how this chemical reaction works. You take 35% uh, hydrogen peroxide, of which we have a ton of back here, uh, it's behind me, um, and you put in an Erlenmeyer flask. Now it has to be an Erlenmeyer flask, this particular shape. You add in the hydrogen peroxide, and then you, you then add soap, and then some food coloring dye. You don't have to add the food coloring dye, but it just gives it a little bit of uh, extra added effect. Um, and then you add in a catalyst. Our catalyst is uh, potassium iodide mixed with water. Um, and then that, what happens there is that the potassium iodide mixes with that solution. It takes, it strips one of the oxygens off the hydrogen peroxide and we end up with water and a ton of O2 gas. That O2 gas rises and goes through the soapy mixture and then turns into foam. If you do too much soap, it kind of bulbs over and nothing really happens. If you had not enough soap, then it just kind of spits all over the place. So really the soap is the absolute most uh, crucial part of this experiment. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill these uh, Erlenmeyer flasks, I have four of them down here, and we're gonna fill these guys up uh, to 1,000 milliliters. And then we're gonna add different amounts of the soap. One half teaspoon, one teaspoon, one and a half teaspoons, two teaspoons. teaspoons of soap is really good. It actually produces a really good reaction, a great reaction. Um, anything less than that we found out is like not very good. It's kind of sporadic and it looks like it's liquid and like there's a lot of bubbles in there. It's kind of ugly. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna step it up in the same manner. We're gonna go, I wrote it down here, two and a half, three, three and a half, four. We've learned that the perfect amount of soap is uh, between two and two and a half teaspoons uh, with 1,000 milliliters of 35% hydrogen peroxide. We're gonna do a little bit of math here and then we're gonna start adding more hydrogen peroxide with the equivocal amount of soap to see if we can actually just amplify the entire reaction. What we're looking at is 1,000 milliliters, two uh, teaspoons, 1,500 milliliters, three teaspoons, and then 2,000 milliliters, four teaspoons. I'm 
I'm gonna amp up the potassium iodide. I'm gonna lower the amount of soap. I'm gonna keep the hydrogen peroxide at 1200 milliliters. Let's go ahead and give it a shot and then we'll have a full recap and we'll know exactly what we're working with here. The one thing that I thought that I knew the whole time was that we were working with the optimal potassium iodide solution. We were not. So now that I know that if I, if I add more potassium iodide, uh, the reaction actually not only, it does happen faster, but it also really amps up that uh, fountain. This makes me really rethink what I've done up until right now. So I'm thinking of this. I can actually add a little bit more soap to this mixture, and I think perhaps we can get that perfect formula that we were looking for. We're gonna try this one more time, and I'm gonna add a little bit more soap, and we're gonna see what happens. Here's what we learned. We learned that the optimal combination of all these ingredients for the best foam fountain of science is as such. 1,000 milliliters of 35% hydrogen peroxide, between two and three teaspoons of soap, and a mixture of potassium iodide and water at four to one or two to one if you want the reaction to happen a little bit faster. You mix those, all those things together, you get a really, really good foam fountain of science. Let me know in the comment section below um, if this surprised you that how these little tiny variables really change this whole reaction. Um, also, if you guys wanna see a Nicopedia live show in your home city and state, let me know in the comment section below. Um, one, if you guys wanna see this show live, and two, where are you guys coming from? Don't give me your address, but just tell me what city and state or what's the closest big city to where you live, and then we're gonna jot it down, and we're gonna start doing some tallying, and there's a good chance that we're gonna do a Nicopedia live show in your neck of the woods. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys really soon.